All right, let's set the stage. Everton FC, a club with a storied history founded back in 1878 and often regarded as a sleeping giant of English football, finds itself in one of the darkest periods in its modern history. We're talking about a team that's won the English top division nine times and lifted five FA Cups. But right now, instead of competing for trophies, they're battling relegation and, most recently, have been hit with a 10-point deduction for breaching financial fair play rules. So, what's gone so wrong? Today, we're diving deep into what's really happening at Goodison Park and why Everton, a club with so much potential, can't seem to find their footing. Trust me, stick with me until the end to find out if their problems can even be fixed before it's too late. Let's kick things off by looking at the biggest source of Everton's problems, managerial instability. Since 2020, the club has had a revolving door of managers, Carlo Ancelotti, Rafael Benitez, Frank Lampard, and now Sean Dyke. Every new manager comes in with a different philosophy, new tactics and fresh expectations. But here's the issue. When you change the manager so frequently, there's no time for continuity or long-term planning. The players don't know what system they're supposed to be playing and the club lacks a clear identity. Deitch's pragmatic approach is meant to solidify the defence, but Everton are still leaking goals, throwing away leads and struggling to score. This inconsistency is killing their momentum. And if that wasn't enough, Everton's off-pitch struggles came to a head last season with a 10-point deduction handed down by the Premier League for breaching financial fair play rules. The club overshot the permitted £105 million loss over a three-year period, recording £124.5 million in losses by the spring of 2022. That £19.5 million difference resulted in one of the most severe penalties ever seen in the Premier League. Everton ultimately finished 15th, narrowly avoiding relegation. This points deduction left fans frustrated, with many calling the punishment unfair, compared to other clubs facing even more serious financial charges. But whatever your view, the reality is that the decision rocked the club. And while Everton appealed the decision, the damage was done, both to their league position and to their financial health. But the instability doesn't stop at the manager's office or the financial side of things. Everton's transfer strategy has been all over the place for years. Despite splashing hundreds of millions on new players, the squad remains one of the weakest in the Premier League. And it's not just about money, it's about how that money is being spent. Take the sale of Richarlison and Anthony Gordon for over £100 million combined. That should have been reinvested wisely, right? Instead, they brought in players like Dwight McNeil and Neil Mopé. Decent Premier League players, sure, but nowhere near the level needed to replace those they lost. And then, there's Dominic Calvert-Lewin, a player who once had the potential to be England's next great number 9, but has been plagued by injuries and inconsistency for the past few seasons. Relying on him alone has been a massive gamble that hasn't paid off. And if you're finding value in these deep dives into football's biggest issues, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. We're closing in on 1,000 subscribers, and every sub helps us continue to bring you more in-depth football analysis. From transfer breakdowns to tactical deep dives, Pitch Report is here to give you the full story on the beautiful game. So, what's happening on the pitch? Sean Dyche's Everton are supposed to be defensively solid and tough to break down, but the reality has been far from that. They've already thrown away leads against Bournemouth and Aston Villa this season, teams they should be competing with, not capitulating to. Despite Deitch's defensive reputation, Everton have conceded 13 goals in their first four games and sit rock bottom of the table. Offensively, it's not much better. Everton are desperately lacking creativity. Players like Abdoulaye Dukure provide some physicality in midfield, but where's the spark? Who's creating chances? The lack of cohesion in attack is stark. Calvert-Lewin, when fit, is isolated up front and there's simply no one to consistently provide service from the flanks or midfield. With a team so devoid of a clear attacking strategy, it's no surprise they're struggling to score. Now, let's shift gears to something bigger. The club's move to a brand new stadium. Everton are building a new ground on the banks of the Mersey, and while that might seem like a positive step forward, it's loaded with financial risks. Right now, Everton are over £1 billion in debt, and by the time that stadium is finished, they're expected to accrue at least another £200 million in costs. Here's the thing, if they get relegated this season, which isn't looking impossible, what happens to all that investment? Will the new stadium attract the revenue they're banking on if they're in the championship? Look at clubs like Leeds United, Sunderland and Portsmouth. Big clubs with rich histories that thought they'd bounce straight back after relegation. It's not always that simple, and Everton could easily find themselves in financial ruin if they go down. 
Everton fans are used to battling it out at the bottom of the table in recent seasons, but how much longer can this go on before they slip through the trap door? They finished 16th in the 2021-22 season, 17th the year after, and narrowly escaped relegation last season. With performances like what we've seen so far, there's every reason to believe they'll be in that same fight again this year. And with Sean Dyche, a manager who built his reputation on keeping Burnley in the Premier League, even he might not have the tools to save them this time. The squad lacks depth, quality and confidence. If things don't turn around soon, it's hard to see how they avoid relegation. And if that happens, the financial implications could be catastrophic. So, what's the solution? Honestly, it's tough to say. On one hand, Everton need to stabilise, stick with a manager, back him in the transfer market and build some cohesion within the squad. But on the other hand, their financial situation and poor decision making over the past few years have put them on the edge of disaster. The new stadium might help in the long term, but right now, they need results on the pitch to avoid the nightmare scenario of relegation. Everton fans, I want to hear from you. Do you think the club will survive this season or is relegation inevitable? And if they go down, how long do you think it will take to bounce back? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below.